Hello everyone and welcome back to Alice Madness Returns, a game where Alice has no feet, apparently. Yes, her feet are missing. They are inside this little hump in the ground. Terrific. So I'm hoping that we can get through the remainder of the Mysterious East section during this episode. And this is going to be a level transition, isn't it? No, it's another 2D section. What fun. Okay. And this is going to be the third and final one of these, uh, followed a by... A seeker on private business arrived in the misery-infested land. She, despite ignorance, uncertainty, and unhappiness in her own life, could not endure to see them suffering. She began to fight against the savage murderers, abusers, and defilers without quite knowing why or for whose sake she truly fought or how the struggle would end. Okay. Uh, I really need to turn the vibration off on my controller because that was cray cray. Um, followed by, I was going to say, there should be um, a third and final sliding block puzzle, which I am not uh, particularly fond of or looking forward to. But I think then we're pretty much going to be at the end of the Mysterious East. And... The transitional area in between this chapter and... is it chapter... This is chapter 3, right? So then chapter 4 is going to be Queen of Hearts Land, the best area in the game by a country mile. And there's a transitional area in between, which is the Card Bridge, which is also a very cool, uh, somewhat sort of iconic um, area within the... Okay, this is a little more complicated than I remember. Get the peach. do really like these, and the art style on these platforming levels is uh, extremely good, and still really reminds me of Rayman Legends. This is uh, a bit like the... what was it called? The engine that was used for Rayman Origins and Legends and also for Child of Light. It's called something like UbiArt Framework, in fact I think that is exactly what it is called. Uh, very very good high definition 2D engine with cool kind of... Um, uh, you know, like boat puppetry sort of things where you can move the. Again, I'm struggling to remember what I'm what the terminology is, but in Adobe After Effects, for example, there's a thing where you can put pins into like a a doll, if you like, and give it joints so that its limbs move sort of realistically, which is kind of what's going on here with Alice's character model. To grab the peach even though we don't need it and I missed the tooth hooray I think it's a gold one so I'm gonna go back for it just make it up there no 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 nope 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 okay cool just while we're going around here I'm gonna have a little sip of my uh, lovely glass of red wine that I've got here Sorry, I apologise for that. That's probably not very entertaining to watch or listen to, but I am very thirsty. And I've got a slightly sore throat, so I do want to just kind of be uh, minding my fluid intake so that I don't lose my voice or start choking uncontrollably into the microphone, which wouldn't be ideal. This is quite tricky. Okay, you fire your little fireball, buddy. Pop over the top. Pretty forgiving timing on that. Nothing too difficult. What's going on here? More clouds. Oh, God. Tricky, tricky, very tricky. What? I sort of got... I'm pretty sure I got stuck in the cloud there. Uh, okay. Totally calling shenanigans on that. Got st I tried to jump, got stuck in the cloud. I think you're supposed to just run left and right. You don't seem to be able to... Um, to jump off. That is more like it. Luckily the checkpoints are quite forgiving. 
Here we go. Exit that ship. Ah. Wow, that sky looks bloody beautiful. The colour palette is so great, man. This sort of, sort of looks a bit like Okami. In fact, I would go so far as to say that the sort of inky, cell-shaded look of the rock here is pretty much a direct rip-off of Okami. <laughs> Okami was definitely first. I think it was on the GameCube or the Wii originally, or no, PS2 and then Wii. And then there was the sequel on DS, Okami Den, which I never played. But the original Okami, I loved it. Okay, this is looking pretty much like the top. Um, some very evil looking urns on either side. And I guess this is the caterpillar's tower. We were supposed to find the caterpillar if I remember rightly. Um... Oh no, the quote has been updated. Your noble work on behalf of the previous elders offers hope, but your journey has far to go. You are out of choices, Alice. You must not fail. You must not walk away. Only you can save us, Origami Ant Monk, which is a great name for a character. I'm guessing there's going to be uh, a load of those samurai wasp dudes now. Oh, this is the caterpillar. Hey, buddy. I've come all this way to find a simulacrum. If I had the time, I'd detail how often you prefer dealing with illusions rather than the real thing. Problems you refuse to deal with don't exist. You deny reality. That's not right. I know what's real. No? Then you allow others to tell you what isn't real. Now, come inside. My memories are shattered. This wicked train has ruined nearly all I can recall. And Wonderland will perish completely as I lose my mind. So much has changed. I can't help Wonderland if I can't help myself. Much has changed, but you've got it backwards. Save Wonderland and you may save yourself. The carpenter was onto something, but he was hiding from the real. Your goal is to accept it. Where should I go then? What should I do? The Queen must be served, Alice. The Queen, in all her guises, must always be served. Alright then. Uh, I wasn't trying to look up Alice's skirt, by the way, with the camera there. I was trying to look up at the cocoon containing the caterpillar. But, you know, even if you were perverted enough to want to look up Alice's skirt, as you can see, it's not particularly exciting. Although, <laughs> um, I do know for a fact that there are mods which... Um, make it more exciting, which I find really creepy and weird. How can she stem this growing corruption or assist my search? What does she know that I don't? She is someone you once knew and loved. Time changes us all. Not all change is good. Remember that? when you find the queen. Time changes us all. Okay, that might actually be the end of the chapter then in that case. I think we have a short uh, real world section here. With some Oi, horrific texture popping. That's enough of that. Coming to regulate this, Nick Ellis. What's this time, Fred? Howling outside the old lady, muttering about a murder in Threadneedle Street, cursing insects on the National Railroad. Had to bring her in, didn't I? Cha 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 cha, menace to herself. But ah, no danger to have her, surely. She don't belong in jail. Too true, but where then does she belong? Let's walk her out, Fred. Send her back to Dr. Bambi. He raised holy hell last time I kept her overnight. Oh, what happened? 
Same night Jack splattered at the waste of mother's love, was nabbed for gutting that heavy outside the mermaid. Yeah, I was taking Alice down and uh, we meet two coppers walking Jack to the cells. He's mad than the usual, I never. Wrong bloke nonsense uh, when he sees Alice. That's a bitch what done it, he yells. She screams, you miserable cur, you leech, you maggot, living off another's labour, etc, etc. I'm admiring her line of inquiry, but suddenly she hits her head or something and fades. Couldn't send her home, could I? And Dr Bumby pitched a fit. Said he'd have me job and me arse on a plate. <laughs> Told him he could have the former. <laughs> Leave the latter alone, thank you very much. Good night, Alice. <laughs> you know the way out. The Cockney Copper, I think, has a really, really good voice actor. The guy who's like, the last one to speak, who's like, Good night, Alice. Had to bring her in, etc. Um, the Welsh guy, um, not so good, but still quite good. Voice acting in this game generally, as I've said before, I find to be a pretty high standard, considering the you know overall budget and um, production values of the rest of the game. The voice acting is really good. I mean, you saw then, right? If I try and I can probably try and recreate that, and I can't do it. How she kind of uh, like got got into her jumping animation as I walked down the stairs. It's that kind of um, inconsistency in development quality which really brings the game down overall. But when it's good, it's bloody good, you know. And the voice acting really brings these characters to life, and that's why I really am fascinated by these. This is my day off. What's she done this time? Indecent exposure, cockfighting, abusive language. Sign out if you can. Yeah, these um real world sections I find so good. This musty sort of shadowy police station with all these wrongans who've been brought in. It's so gloomy and dark, and like the dust there, um, dancing in the beams of light coming through the windows. It's so good. It's so good. You know, it's like, this is exactly how it would have looked. Obviously very stylized, but in terms of lighting and stuff, there's, there's nothing providing um, artificial light in this room. There's these, there's these kind of gas lamps here, but this is gloomy and shadowy with very, very bright light coming in from the street, and I just think it's so, like, well considered. It just does this amazing job of building atmosphere. Hey, there's the white cat. Guess we're following him again. Hey, bud. You alright? You remind me of a celebrity, and I can't think who. Some sort of actor or someone? Who is it? I can't think. It'll come to me much later on, probably. When it's completely out of context. Ooh, this is looking decidedly wonky, and you saw there was a little glitchy bit of her landing in a different map there. Very, very strange transitions. Can't switch to first person mode in this bit. The camera is fixed, kind of like the original Resident Evil, if you know what I mean. Um, camera relative movement. Still very, very cool. And this really reminds me of the original American McGee's Alice game with all these weirdos in prison cells and this kind of wonky insane asylum kind of look we have a bit more of an extreme take on that coming up later uh, but this I think is going to take us into the transition into the card bridge area you can see this is turning into Queen of Hearts land uh, which is the iconic kind of final area or well, one of the last areas of the original game, um, which is where we're going back to in the next chapter proper. But uh, the things inside the cells are becoming less and less human, the walls are very wonky and it just becomes this kind of 
really nice throwback to the graphical style of the original one with these gothic keyhole shaped doors and heart shaped openings and this sort of stuff. I like it. And once again we get one of these cool transitional levels where she um, wears her original uh, get up from the first game. The blue and white, well the blue dress with the white pinafore and the um, occult symbols on the pockets and the blood stains on the pinafore. Uh, and this is the car bridge. I remember this section uh, from the last time I played this being very annoying. Um, so we'll see how we do, probably badly. I mean, you know what to expect by now, guys. I don't need to repeat myself yet again about how terrible I am at this game. We are getting through it nonetheless. And this is very, very cool. Makes a nice change from the Mysterious East stuff. Uh, it seems to be following the teeth is a fairly good uh, bet for determining where the cards are going to appear. Uh, so, so far, certainly. Boing. Okay. This is just a section of pure platforming with a, a couple of sort of timing puzzles built in. I don't remember any combat in here, but there may be some. Like leeches hiding in here, for example. No? We got lucky. I remember there's these things where you have um, to do multiple pressure plates at once to make things appear in the right places and things to open a door. We'll uh, get to that as we come to it. Just want to have a look at these. Seem to be standard playing cards. Jack of Diamonds. King of Hearts. Stabbing himself through the head. Very nice. Ah, here we go. Okay, so there's definitely some invisible platforms here, judging by the uh, abundance of shrinking violets. Yes, this is the puzzle that I remember particularly. So there's an invisible bridge there, and I think what we need to do is lower it. Um, with Probably with this button, but I remember that there was a button around the other side as well. Yeah, this is right. And that, I think, opens the door on the other side. So... With a bit of trial and error. Ah, half of the bridge. Okay, so... Oh, okay, no, that, that, low, that lets us get onto the bridge. Um, so... What does the other side do? That opens the door, and does it close immediately when we step off? No, it does not. Oh, it closes slowly, right. Right. So we've got to get across there very quickly and probably shrink through the door. I think it's a case of this. Um, we... Oh no, it's closing even though there's a thing upon it. And that's annoying. Right, so... I guess we need to very quickly get around here. I don't think that's actually quicker than running, is it? Yeah, nowhere near getting that. 
Ah, but there is another invisible platform over there, so what's that doing? Where's this taking me? Is it taking me somewhere good? Not really, no. Um... Right, next question. Does having a clockwork bomb on the door thing... Right, does reset. Okay, I think I've got it. So presumably this platform stays down until we step off it. It appears that it does. So, we keep this on here. We go around, open this, get onto the platform just there, blow it up. Quickly get across, very quickly please. Quicker. Shrink. And we're through. And I missed those violets, the they give two teeth each, those violets, but what, are, you know, it's only four teeth. We're gaining teeth quite slowly, it's going to be a while till we get another upgrade, and we're pretty well decked out at the moment, so... I'm thinking, yeah, not too bad, eh? Boing! Oh, crap. Sneaky fuckers. Boing! Down here. Right, what's this do? Creates a platform. Um... Do I have to go down to that? Oh, that's where I came up. Ah. There is a thingy. Gotta be quick, yo. Gotta go fast. And this is doing... Oh, there's an invisible snout. Appears to lead to a bottle. Well, I mean, I suppose we'll get it. Seeing as how I went to the trouble to pepper the snout. Even though my track record with collectibles in this run so far has been tragic. Right, so I'm not sure what it is that we're supposed to be doing with this. Probably just floating down. So what exactly was the point of creating those towers? Oh, cheeky fucker. I was wondering if there's some sort of pattern to the numbers of the cards that appear, but there doesn't seem to be. They seem to be following suit, though. Cool. I think that's the end. Yes, this is looking good. She's got a new outfit. So let's take a quick look there. Playing card themed outfits with uh, kind of um, playing card Jack kind of shoulders or Tudor sort of ruched shoulders there. Checkerboard at the bottom. And the skull on the bow there with the hanging ribbons. I like it. It's really cool. We can start off with a slide. And I missed the thing, of course. I wasn't sure whether that was going to hurt me or give me teeth, but of course, um, 
whichever choice I made was going to be the wrong choice. Those are the things that hurt you. The piles of smouldering embers. So we're going to descend down into Queen of Hearts land or Queen's land. In the original game, I can never remember that because in the original game uh, you go to Queen of Hearts land first and then there's like an, an extra area beyond it called Queen's land. I think this is Queen of Hearts land but we'll, we'll find out in a moment when it gives us the subtitle. And as I've said multiple times before, this is definitely the coolest area of the game. Oh, and I died. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. Do I get to keep all those teeth and get more teeth? No, I don't. It's not like a Shovel Knight in that respect. <laughs> In Shovel Knight, you can use the death checkpoints to uh, manipulate the area to get shitloads of money if you do it the right way. That's a game I'm hoping to get round to on this channel very soon. I'm going to be finishing up some of the, uh, frankly, far too many ongoing series that I have going on uh, right now. Starting with this one and Broken Age and so on, and Little Nightmares. Once I've done those, I'll be carrying on with, with some Demon Souls. And uh, I want to start doing some 2D platformer stuff because I've been on a real uh, craving recently for some classic 2D platforming action. I want to do more Metroidvania stuff. I really enjoyed the Metroidvania stuff I've done before on this channel. So uh, we'll see how we do with that. Ah, look at that. How cool. Back to admire your handiwork, returning to the scene of the crime. It had to be done, Cat. You said so yourself. You and this Red Queen cannot both survive. She is a cancer in your body. Excise her or perish. Well, she was the face of evil in the heart of darkness. She didn't treat you too well last time. Lost your head, as I recall. She was completely deranged. You picked up her crown, but now you've put it down. You must speak to her. What's left of her, anyway? Queensland. I was wrong. Yes, this is the second area. Whoa. This is weird. Okay. We have some moving things. Um, so what the cat was referring to there was that this was uh, kind of in a, a little bit of a better state when we first arrived here in the previous game and we, uh, we wrecked it, frankly. And hang on, I feel like I want to go down here. The tooth would be a clue that there's something here, and that it's not just certain death. Um, but yeah, again, just the colour palette in this area and the general atmosphere and design of the architecture well, this is this area is a big kind of fan service um, for people who played the first one because um, the art style is subtly different through the rest of this game than it is from the first one. And uh, what are you? Oh, you're just a normal fuck. See you later, bro. And see you later. And see you later. I guess uh, they start us off nice and easy. Mushroom, thank you. But yeah, I'll do. I'll get a little way into here, and then we'll end. I don't want the episode to be quite as long as the last one, but we've made some good progress, and this is my favourite area, so I do want to uh, dabble a little bit here. What's that? Some sort of owl thing. I think it was just for show and not an enemy. Again, I've deliberately left it a few years since the last time I played this game, so that I'm not. I don't know it off by heart. Um, I've taken advantage of the fact that my memory is terrible. Card guard. Classic enemy, looking even more disturbing in this. They have skulls, skull faces now in this one, as opposed to the original where they have kind of a... Oh. I think when they're on the floor, 
You can squish it. Oh no, they do just have a finite amount of health. Okay, cool. So, they get... There are different classes of them. And yes, there are apparently shitloads. The red ones, I noticed there was a red, red one over there. When they give... Yes, okay, I remember. So when they're on the floor with the red aura um, surrounding them, that means that they're going to get up again. It might be that the red ones can regenerate them, but I think if you squish them when they're on the floor, then they stay dead. Kind of like the um, the weird Twilight Beasts from uh, Zelda Twilight Princess, where they... If you leave one alive, it screams and regenerates the other ones. You have to kill them before they stand up again. But overall, very fun enemy to fight, particularly in big mobs like that. Hello, mate. I saw your eyes move. Let's talk to you and see what you've got to say. The Red Kingdom's in ruins, but you're no better off. When you defeated her, I tried to reclaim the castle, but I was set upon by her monstrosities. The malignant royal bitch still reigns. I'm here to petition her. I must get inside. The only way in is through me. Sacrifices must be made. Those who say so usually mean they should be made by others. Cynicism is a disease. It can be cured. Once inside, beware of the outsized killer who patrols her domain. Never confront him. He is invincible. Now cut me loose. I'll show you the meaning of sacrifice. Cut you loose. Okay then. <laughs> I would say that is the meaning of sacrifice. Uh, but I would also say that I sacrificed you rather than you sacrificing yourself. Can I get over to this platform? Yes, I can. Obviously, beyond the Red King is where I have to uh, go to continue the area, but there's going to be something around here that's probably going to be worth taking. Well, we're getting, we're getting teeth out of it, and there's a snout there. Let's pepper this piece. on there, and there's a keyhole, probably leading to a memory or a bottle. Hello? I smell a trap. That looks like the Duchess. Wow, nice. Is that the Duchess? Hmm. You'll have to uh, fill me in on that if you know the lore of this better than I do. Which you probably do, because I can't remember who that is. The Duchess, of course, we saw at the beginning. She's the one who gave us the uh, pepper grinder in the Vale of Tears. And she's also the first boss of American McGee's Alice, the original game. Um, I can't remember the latter part of that game too well. So I'm trying to remember whether or not that is... Uh, the Queen of Diamonds or something like that, a, a character who appears later on. I can't remember, but it does look like a sort of haggard version of the um, of the Duchess. A sort of skeletal, gaunt version. But yeah, how are we doing for weapon upgrades? We've got 522. Um... 700 or 800 for these two. That's not so useful. Probably going to focus on these two. So we'll keep collecting for now. And we'll see how we do with that. I'll go for a few more minutes before I end. Once again, some weird flying thing. And once again, I'm not trying to look up Alice's skirt. I was just trying to look at the surroundings here. Uh, that's the queen. And that's death. Ah. Very cool looking place. It's definitely the coolest area of the game. Is this her already?
I love this area so much. So gothic and so exaggerated. It makes Tim Burton look like crap. Every picture tells a story. You wouldn't tolerate a book without pictures when you were a girl. Aha. Uh -huh. Every picture tells a story. That picture tells the story of a very gothic queen of hearts with tentacle slash lobster pincer hair and the face which uh, kind of reminds me in a weird way of the Kelsey Grammer voiced grasshopper from Pixar's A Bug's Life. Okay, so we can go this way I'm assuming towards death or this way. Ah! Making platforms appear. Do they go away? Yes they do. So it's a timed puzzle. I uh, don't think I'll be able to jump across there. No. Oh no. I'm, it might be possible with a little bit of planning on the jumps. That was even worse. Alright, well fuck that. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, I don't really want to be spending as much time as I did in the previous area uh, on any of the rest of the game, to be quite honest, because that slightly overstayed its welcome. I felt like it did, anyway. So, what's this doing? Making a thingy appear. And where's that taking me? Um, well, I didn't actually look what was through this club symbol, so... A bottle. Bottle. And... A secret passage. Which leads to a pull chain. Ah, there we are. So that will be uh, an infinite spawn. So we don't need to worry about that disappearing. We only need to use the first one. The first air vent is, is timed. But that's no problem. So we'll hop on over here. And it goes up and down, apparently, so... I'm not sticking around to find out if uh, riding it downwards takes you to a pit of certain doom. Probably does. Can I get through this door? No. Loving the look of this area so much. Again, just very good use of um, slightly primitive bloom lighting and stuff like that, just to give this kind of real contrast of light and shadow. It's very, very fabulous. Yes, yes, I like it. Very, very strong art direction. Cool cobwebby library. <laughs> what was that? Hmm. Um, a bottle and a teapot. Oh, what fun. Oh yes, no, it's sorry, not a teapot enemy. It wants me to use my teapot to blow this open. Sorry, I'm an idiot hole. And it froze, but it's fine. Uh, an air vent, some teeth, I guess I'm going down here. Very strange and disturbing noises. But I like it. Ooh, some breakable things. Can't miss those. And a leech. Hmm. Okay. We've got a little battle arena here. So once this is done. Uh, I'll end the episode. I, 
can't remember what it is that the red ones do compared to the black ones. They probably just, like, uh, are casters. You know, like, they, they will cast projectiles or something. Uh, I'm not leaving them alive long enough to find out. Bang. Hey there. Feels so satisfying squashing them when they're on the ground. Oh yes, I remember this guy. <laughs> the Executioner. And he has worms coming out of his eyes, which is very cool looking. This guy uh, chases you around. I believe he kills you in one hit. I can't remember where I'm supposed I'm to go idiot. from here. Don Quixote had a better chance with his windmills, and without risk of decapitation. A prudent exit is no less so for being hasty. Yeah, but how do I make a prudent exit? Um. Yeah, he's just taunting me. Ow, fuck me. I really can't remember what... Yeah. Um, I'm. You're supposed to run away from this guy for a long time. Uh, yeah, that didn't go well. So, so, oh, the door opened apparently. Yes. Okay, we'll continue. We'll get through this little bit, the first wave of this guy, and then I'll end. Boing. Yes, definitely uh, pays to have a high-powered hobby horse when fighting these guys. Because the hobby horse actually floors them in two, and then a three, a third one on the combo, finishes them off like that. So in fact, simply a three hit combo with the hobby horse uh, takes these guys out. Good to know. Right, so I don't know if you have to survive in the room with him for a little while before the door opens, but it did look like it was open uh, as I as I died then. So I'm an idiot. Don Quixote had a better chance with his windmills, and without risk of decapitation. A prudent exit is no less so for being hasty. Yeah, so talking of um ah, this way. you and that's an also save so talking of Don Quixote uh, as they were um, Terry Gilliam has just wrapped filming the man who killed Don Quixote which is famously one of the most troubled film productions of all time uh, and in fact it even had a documentary film made about it around the time that it starred Johnny Depp uh, called Lost in La Mancha which I recommend to anyone but I'm so excited for that film it's got Jonathan Price and Adam Driver no no that Oh, that was a previous incarnation. I digress. I'm going to end this episode right here. Next time we will continue deeper into the very, very gothic Queensland. Thank you very much for watching today, and I do hope you enjoyed this episode of Alice Madness Returns. If you did, let me know what you think and drop me a like, and I will see you next time for more. Take care, my friends. Goodbye.